Hello everybody and then this is the Week Strand and today we are going to take a look at Hammer Horror again. Hammer Horror was resurrected around 10 years ago and the first movie they trotted out was pretty important that it was going to be a both successful movie and a movie that would remind fans of the old Hammer Horror that um, this would just not be a cheap cash-in or something like that. They did the movie called The Woman in Black. Was it a good relaunch of the Hammer Horror movie? Let's take a look at it, shall we? This is The Woman in Black. Arthur Kipps and his son in real life Daniel Radcliffe's godson, probably that's why they have such a good bonding in this movie, has come to a remote village somewhere in uh, the British rural areas. Uh, he's some kind of a lawyer and he's there to you know do some paperwork, lawyer stuff and uh, you know for an estate there and uh, you know, the classical thing where they arrive there and people say, no, oh, go away from here, it's dangerous, spooky, and stuff like that. Uh, and he, of course, gets a little stuck there because he discovered that there is a vengeful spirit that is terrorizing the locals. And uh, so we're here for a um, haunted house movie, you could say. Um, now, this was Daniel Radcliffe's first movie after you know, having a very secure job uh, for well over a decade portraying the uh, famous boy wizard. Was he going to cut it in an adult role? I would say yes. I'm, I think that one of Daniel Radcliffe's ups, upsides was that he played the same character for so long that he, you know, grew to be an integral part of it. I can't see anybody else playing Harry Potter except a Radcliffe. So that's that. But apart from, you know, a movie here and there, he his movie career never really went anywhere. But I think he's absolutely okay in this movie. He isn't fantastic or anything like, like that. But he is at least a character that we can latch onto. To be fair, this movie isn't populated at all by that many memorable characters or, you know, notable faces to latch onto. But we instead latch on to a thing that is equally important, the atmosphere of this movie. This movie is more about the chills than the spills, so to say. The moors, the mists, the pubs, the cobblestone streets, the train stations, the fog, the mist, everything just creates this very, 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 you know, cozy, ghost atmosphere that this movie uses to its absolutely fullest extent. I would argue that this is one of the best horror movies that has been made in uh, the last decade or so when it comes to uh, presenting an atmosphere and a place for us. Because this movie is more based on atmosphere than, than it is on jump scares, I gave it a, a very high stamp of approval right from the get-go. The story isn't that complicated, it's just a classical scorned woman you know, death and secrets and stuff like that. It isn't anything revolutionary or anything like that, but I liked the story and I liked where they were taking it. This wasn't the classical, um, you know, possession story or something like that, which, made, which, which I have been bored to death by in the last 15, 20 years. So I was with this movie just up until the ending. There they had to go to an ending I was not a big fan of. I understand why they did it, I can respect them for doing it, but I would have still liked a slightly different ending. It knocked the movie down a peg or two, nothing terrible or anything like that, but I was just a little, ah, uh, you were so close movie, you were so close. 2012 was a great movie year. This was by far one of the best horror movies that was made during this time period. 
I haven't seen the sequel, I haven't heard anybody saying that it is good, and absolutely nobody has said that it is better than this one. I would bet that some people think that this movie is a little too slow, and that, that the movie doesn't pump out enough gore, but my very, very particular taste in horror, this t ticked a lot of boxes. I like slow methodical pacing, I like more creepiness, I like more mood, I like more atmosphere, I hate jump scares, I don't like gore and violence in my horror movies. At least not uh, to, to, to the, you know, torture porn thing that has, you know, been made in several years. And uh, this one ticked a lot of boxes. I would have wished for a little bit bigger and more interesting gallery of characters, but I still think what we got was totally passable and totally serviceable in that case. And Radcliffe was a face you could attach yourself to. I mean, he had played a, the, a boy wizard without a personality for 10 years. Now we get to play a, a lawyer without a personality and the transition wasn't too difficult, I would assume. Slightly underwhelming ending aside, I think this one is an absolute banger of a horror movie for, for the most part. Great settings, fantastic cinematography, great music. I give this movie 78 points. You should be very proud of yourself, Hammer Films. You made a great comeback. I don't know that much about what you did after this, but this one was a pretty good success. So that was uh, The Woman in Black. Did you like this movie? Do you like the Hammer Horror movies? Or the movies they have done since this, the release of this movie? And uh, did you like the sequel? Let me know in the comment section and I'll see you next time from, well, so-and-so, viewing, well, uh, such-and-such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.